I think we have to start with the news, obviously, the Supreme Court ruling that most pundits say cements the ACA into the fabric of American life. Do you believe that that's the case, or could politics or something else continue to make this law a question mark? Do you? Well, uh, like the president, I'm guilty of being an optimist, uh, which is uh, how I got there to the White House working on health reform after having also worked on it in the Clinton administration. So yes, I do believe that uh, the Supreme Court's decision uh, and in such a strong fashion, the Chief Justice's uh, wording about the the law was intended to strengthen insurance markets, not to destroy them. The combination of that and the fact that uh, I think the evidence is there, the facts are there, that the law is working, does mean that it is now cemented and will take its place alongside um, Medicare and Medicaid that we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of right now. Do you think we're done with the perils of Pauline, or could it come back? I think we're done in terms of the law. I think the controversy will go on. and. Frankly, I blame the press for that as much as I blame um, the Republicans. Um, pretty much all of the press, just to give you an example, treated the issue in the King v. Burwell case, you included, as a, as a matter of on the one hand, on the other hand. And I think that journalists make a big mistake when they take facts, not opinions, facts and attach a false equivalency to them. There isn't a single Republican involved in drafting the law. And this I found out uh, before this was the case because I was talking to these people when they were writing the bill. There isn't a single Republican involved in drafting the law, not a one who thought in any way, shape, or form that states that did not set up their own exchanges would not have their citizens get the subsidies. In fact, when the case was first filed in district court, I asked uh, someone uh, who I'm very close to, who's a lawyer, a very experienced lawyer, has some Supreme Court experience. I sent the case to her and said, what about this? This looks like something. And she wrote back, she said, if you spend five minutes on this, you are wasting your time. There isn't a single federal judge who will even look at this case. It is just bullshit. And Obviously, she was wrong, but that doesn't mean uh, the press ought to have treated it incessantly as in, this side claims Congress meant this, this side claims Congress meant to do this. It was just a fiction. So coming to where we are today, you hear uh, these press conferences, and I know I sound like you know, um, a press spokesman for uh, the Affordable Care Act, and if you read my book, you'll know that I'm not. But you see uh, Republican press releases, uh, uh, House Speaker Boehner, for example, saying the Affordable Care Act is going to continue to drive up costs for all Americans. There's nothing in the Affordable Care Act that raises insurance premiums. In fact, there's a lot in it uh, that is supposed to keep them under control and lower. It doesn't really do that either. But uh, so we now are having a debate about um, this is just too expensive for the average American. The average American is totally unaffected by the Affordable Care Act. The average American has insurance from their employer, will keep insurance from their employer, and the fact that those costs are going up has to do with the fact that those costs have been going up since 1970. 